Okay, now the only thing is, I need some light here so I can read. <laughs> okay, uh, as I was saying, uh, I have some uh, very, I'm very concerned about the quality of the oils that people are at this time receiving uh, here in Europe and elsewhere. Uh, the, the last leader of the hemp movement, Jack Hare, he named this oil the Rick Simpson oil. And that name has caught on, and now people worldwide are using it. You know, people who supply the oil often tell people that they're supplying the Rick Simpson oil, and they even tell people that I'm directly affiliated with their operations. And I am not connected with anyone who is supplying oil. So if you see an advertisement like this, then you know it's, it's a lie. At present, there are many people supplying high-quality oils to those in need. But also, there are many people supplying low-quality trash, and they're calling it the Rick Simpson oil, and people are paying vast amounts of money for these oils, and they are simply being robbed. Now, a lot of the problem here in Europe is that there's so many sativa strains being grown. Now, in North America, they predominantly grow indicas there because they have a shorter growing season and people that actually grow the, the cannabis and sell it, they, you know, they, they can grow these crops much more quickly than they can a sativa crop. So this is the reason they grow the heavy indica strains. But here in Europe, it's actually quite hard to find the good heavy indica strains. I mean, you can tell just from smoking the material. If you take a little bit of the bud material and make a cigarette from it, you know, when you start to puff it, you can tell if it's, if it's making you sleepy and it makes you want to go lay down. That's a heavy indica. But if it energizes you and it makes you want to go do things, that's a sativa. And if you give a terminal cancer patient sativa, it energizes them. It interrupts their sleeping patterns. It has the totally wrong effect. So I always encourage people, it's, it actually at best, right now, it's best to grow your own or go out and, and try to get the material you need from a grower and ha take someone with you. If you've never experienced cannabis, take someone with you who has smoked it and let them sample it. And if it makes them sedated, then buy the material and make your medicine. Uh, you know, I'm, I don't know what to say right now. I mean, every time I come to one of these lectures, there's always many people hoping that I can supply the oil to them. But it's impossible. You know, it's not, it's not that I wouldn't, it's just that I can't. I mean, if I was to bring oil in here, the police would arrest me in 15 minutes. <laughs> You know, I mean, it's your governments. It's their responsibility to do what's right for you. You know, so I have, I really, I, I don't play any role. Thank you. I'm not playing any role in holding this medicine back, believe me. I want to see it out there just as badly as you do. So hopefully today, maybe we can make that happen. Thank you. The lecture I'm about to give is called Repealing the Laws Regarding Cannabis Hemp and Why the Growing and Use of Cannabis Should Have No Regulations or Restrictions. Throughout history, cannabis has always played an important role in our survival, and judging from historical accounts, it appears that it may well have been man's first cultivated crop. Before the laws prohibiting its free use, free growing and use were imposed, farmers everywhere grew this plant to satisfy our needs in many ways, such as in the production of food, fiber, medicine, rope, paper, and many other things we used in our day-to-day -day lives. As human beings, we are all supposed to have the natural right to heal ourselves using medicinal plants and herbs, which were put on this earth to serve that purpose. But in this twisted reality in which we exist today, 
governments who are under the control of the rich elite tell us that we do not have this right and we must comply with rules and regulations that force us to allow doctors to administer chemicals and poisons which for the most part do our bodies and health a great deal of harm. The reason for this is that the mega rich do not only control our governments, they are also major shareholders in the pharmaceutical industry and just about everything else we require to exist. If we should choose to reject the regulations which have been put in place to please the rich and powerful and then decide to heal ourselves in a sensible manner using a, uh, using a natural harmless medication like hemp oil, then this is deemed to be illegal. From my perspective, whoops, excuse me. From my perspective, what is going on right now in medicine and in government circles regarding the medicinal use of cannabis can best be described as a horror show, which was designed to ensure that drug companies controlled by the mega rich continue to to have record profits while we, the sick and suffering, are forced to take the so-called treatments the medical system provides. In other words, our lives are being controlled by the agendas of the rich elite, and since most governments worldwide have fallen under their control, we the people have no one to protect us from their manipulation. When we open our minds to what is truly going on around us, it becomes perfectly clear that we cannot continue to go on this way. Because in a short time from now, our planet will become so toxic that it will be unable to support human life. This is the future we will all have to face if something is not done immediately to rectify this situation. And only the cannabis hemp plant can provide us with a rational solution to solve most of our problems we currently face. What follows are a few examples of the different ways in which cannabis can fulfill our needs and allow us to begin to treat this earth properly. Removing the threat of food shortages and starvation. Now, sick. Okay. Uh, since the seeds from the cannabis hemp plant are so nutritious and plentiful, and this plant can be grown just about anywhere, it's free growing in use as a food source should be encouraged. And if this were done, it would, it would prevent the threat of starvation from occurring for vast numbers of people worldwide. We have all seen pictures of starving children who live in countries where natural disasters have taken place. And often these events occur in areas with harsh climates. Now what would happen if the governments of these devastated nations were to allow their citizens to grow cannabis to satisfy their nutritional requirements. Since many strains of cannabis are so hardy and grow well in harsh environments, I can only conclude that if this were done, it would put an end to all this needless suffering and many who would otherwise die from malnutrition could be saved. Now let's talk about energy. Those who provide us with the energy we require to run our cars and the fossil fuels needed to fuel our power generating plants like to tell us that if we try to use hemp as an energy source that it would eat up too much of our valuable farmland. So therefore, such a solution is not viable. Statements such as this are simply being used as propaganda to ensure that these companies will remain in business. But in reality, these statements have no basis in fact. 
The simple truth is, when farmers grow cannabis on a large scale, they can not only provide a sustainable, non-polluting source of energy, but a wonderful food source and medicine as well. With the new methods available today, as much as 1,800 gallons of ethanol can be produced from one acre of cannabis hemp, which equals about 4,200 square meters of land under cultivation. This means that if every household were to grow an acre of hemp, they would then be energy independent and no longer at the mercy of the big energy providers. In Brazil, over half the vehicles on the highways of this country are being fueled by ethanol produced from sugarcane, and the people of Brazil only have to pay a fraction of the cost to fuel their cars when compared to the prices we have to pay to do the same. Since cannabis is even better suited for this purpose than sugarcane, why should we not allow this plant to supply our energy needs in an earth-friendly and sustainable way? The use of fossil fuels is poisoning our planet at an ever-increasing rate, and we would have to be total fools to allow this destruction to continue when cannabis can provide us with a viable alternative to fulfill our energy requirements in an earth-friendly and harmless manner. Look at the devastation caused from events like the Gulf oil spill and the effect it has had upon our oceans and all the living creatures they contain. All this took place because the company in control wanted to save money, so they neglected to, to install the valve, which is, standard, which is in standard use to prevent an, occur an occurrence such as this from happening. Why do we allow these money-hungry energy providers to do this type of damage to our environment, when there are much more sensible ways to provide the energy we require? Not only are those presently in control poisoning our earth with their overuse of fossil fuels, after the Second World War, they also introduced us to the use of nuclear energy. In truth, they have harnessed the atom to accomplish the simple task of boiling water while ignoring the dangers involved with its use. What are we supposed to do with all the nuclear waste these power plants produce? Not to mention the fact that when a nuclear catastrophe occurs, we have no way to protect ourselves or other living creatures from its effects. So why would anyone in their right mind even consider the use of such dangerous technology? Now as you can see for yourself from these pictures, you know, the one with the fire, that's Fukushima, the workers with masks, that's Fukushima, and of course down here in the corner you can see the oil spill. I mean, why, why are we allowing this to happen? I mean, we have to live on this planet, and these events are literally killing us more and more every day. So there's, there's, no, sense, there's no sensible reason why this should go on. Rich, rich maniacs who have no care or concern about the future of humanity are controlling our existence, and the fact that they have detonated over 2,000 nuclear weapons since 1945 proves this statement to be true. When they test these devices, we are left with the radioactive effects caused from these, detona from these detonations. And although these small radioactive particles are invisible to the naked eye, they are doing great damage to our health and the health of other living creatures as well. I really do not even understand why anyone would feel that the use of such weapons is necessary. For by this point in man's history, we all should have learned that killing each other with the use of weapons of mass destruction or by other means is simply an exercise in futility. Now let's look at the issue of finding employment. This is a very sad picture when you look at this. I have a PhD, finished three postdoctorates, published six papers, will work for food. That's how grim things really are for many of us today. At present, there are many countries where it is almost impossible to find employment. Residents of these regions are often forced to travel hundreds or even thousands of kilometers from home 
to find work so they can exist or to send money home to their families to help them survive. Over 50,000 different items can be produced from cannabis hemp. And just about everything from plastics to building materials and anything else we require in our day-to-day -day lives can be manufactured from this plant while doing little or no further damage to our environment. I mean, just, just look at this image before you. I mean, look at all the uses. You know, and we can do this without harming our environment or harming ourselves. So, believe me, when I say the future is cannabis, I think it's more than evident that we have nowhere else to turn. If we are truly serious about saving our planet, growing cannabis hemp to fulfill our needs is the only rational solution. If we begin to grow this plant everywhere on a large scale once more, it will not only provide us with most of the necessities we require to exist, it will also provide farmers with a viable crop to grow and it will create countless jobs in earth-friendly, hemp-based industries which could put an end to our unemployment problems. Now let's talk, now let's take a very hard look at medicine. The face of what we call medicine today will be forever changed once high-quality extracts from medicinal strains of hemp are made available. The harm that cancer-causing treatments such as chemotherapy and radiation, etc., are causing will finally be recognized, and very soon the use of this type of madness will no longer be employed. Now, I, I've dealt with thousands of people, and I've seen the damage that radiation and chemotherapy does over and over again. And to be perfectly honest, folks, I, I would not even consider taking such a treatment. I don't think anyone should. This, this is just rank poison. That's what chemo is. And radiation is no different. If you die from the radiation, you're dying from radiation poisoning. So it's like I said, for them to even employ these, these so-called treatments, I think is nothing more than lunacy. Once, a public, once public opinion forces governments to allow the use of medicines produced from cannabis and other medicinal plants, doctors will no, will no longer be forced to use treatments they know to be harmful, and they will be able to treat and heal their patients in a much more effective and harmless manner. We cannot blame the governments of today for the corruption which was allowed to take place in the past, but now that the truth is finally becoming widely known, any government which still refuses to do what is right for their people should be taken out of office as quickly as possible. In addition, governments must also begin to allow their citizens to grow their own hemp to fulfill their medical needs, if they should choose to do so. Since there was never any logical reason other than greed as to why cannabis was ever outlawed in the first place, and we now know that natural non-addictive extracts from this plant can treat most serious health conditions harmlessly and very effectively. What right could any government possibly have to deny the use of this God-given plant to those who require its use as a medicine? The human... Oh, excuse me. How could anyone who thinks rationally reject the truth about the benefits this wonder of nature can provide? For decades now, we have allowed ourselves to be robbed of the use of what is probably the greatest and most beneficial natural resource that we have on this planet. So now that we know the truth and realize that growing this plant, in reality, is our only salvation, don't you think it's about time that we all got together and brought this about? The healing powers of oils produced from medicinal varieties of cannabis are now being recognized by countless individuals worldwide. And the use of this life-saving medication is gaining vast numbers of followers every day. At present, one country after another are legalizing the medicinal use of cannabis. But governments are saying very little about why this is occurring. 
For many years, activists have been trying to have the smoking aspect of this healing plant made legal to help those with medical problems. But for the most part, all their efforts have been, have been ignored, since big money interests, which control our news media, have been successful in convincing many people that these activists are simply trying to have the drug they choose to use themselves made legal. Even though smoking cannabis is now finally being recognized as a form of preventative medicine, and those who enjoy its use are much less likely to suffer from many serious medical conditions, still government officials have sat behind their desks and done nothing. But now that the healing power of oils produced from this same plant are gaining such notoriety as a miracle worker, one government after another are making its medicinal use legal once more. It is the medical effectiveness of these oils which is bringing this all about. But with the knowledge we now have pertaining to its healing powers, it makes one wonder how the medicinal use of this plant was ever restricted in the first place. Every law, statute, or act which was ever imposed against the free growing and use of this plant were based in corruption. These restrictions were simply designed to keep us all enslaved to the wants and needs of the most wealthy among us. And if given the opportunity, these are the same lunatics who plan to eliminate over 90% of the Earth's current population. Well, I have some bad news for those who think they have the right to control us while trying to eliminate the vast majority of those who currently populate this planet. Your laws and restrictions are not worth the paper they are written on and we will not passively continue into the depths of despair and allow sick-minded individuals like those who are presently in control to guide our destiny. Now that we know the truth about this plan and what the mega-rich have planned for us, we would have to be total idiots to allow them to fulfill their aims. No matter if you are a government official, a doctor, a lawyer, or a police officer, etc. Your friends and loved ones are needlessly suffering and dying too at the hands of these criminals whose policies you have continued to enforce. So I think it's just about time that people who work in these professions and others begin to realize the harm they are causing to their fellow man and start to work for the greater good of those who are paying their salaries. As someone in a position of public trust, your first responsibility is the health and well-being of the public you are supposed to serve, and to blindly continue to enforce policies which bring harm to our species is no longer acceptable. Once individuals in many fields of endeavor see the error of their ways and begin to do their jobs more properly, medicine and many other things about our society will forever be changed for the better. Isn't this what we all truly desire? And if so, now we, now we have the means to bring this about if we simply stand together and see that it comes to pass. Truly, it can only be said that we, are, that we are all to blame for allowing our earth to become so toxic that now all of these poisons and toxins we have allowed to escape into our, into our environment are having a very detrimental effect on the health of all living creatures, including man. This self-destructive behavior must be brought to a halt, or very soon there is a strong possibility that our species and many others will face extinction. Look into the eyes of your children and grandchildren and tell me if this is the future you want them to endure. If we are, if we are to call ourselves rational human beings, it is our responsibility to see the coming generations are not given a death sentence simply because we refuse to act so they could have a decent future. Should we continue to remain silent about what is being done to mankind and this earth, we need to survive, then it can only be said that we have become the authors of our own destruction. It's hard to accept the fact that our way of life is based on the wants and needs of the mega-rich, and in reality, 
It was their manipulation that has now brought us to the very brink of destruction. We have allowed the big money interest to do more damage to this planet in the last hundred years than in all human history combined. How much longer are we to ignore the catastrophic events which their way of doing business causes? And how much longer are we willing to turn our backs on the obvious harm these events are doing to both our health and this earth? Since it appears that most governments are unwilling to put a stop to the destructive nature of the business practices of the rich elite, then the only alternative we have, if we wish to survive, is to unite the people of all nations to bring this reign of terror to a halt. We are the human race, and we shall overcome. But let's try to handle what is to come in the near future in the most rational way possible without employing the use of violence. We cannot build something better if we start out by making the same mistakes we have made in the past. So just for once, let's get it right this time, for we, for we may never have this opportunity again. In truth, we now have the medicine of our dreams at our disposal, and the only thing that is preventing us from its free use are a bunch of rules and regulations that the rich and powerful have put in place. To my way of thinking, I find it inconceivable that we would allow them to continue on with this travesty when indeed now we all know the truth. No one ever had the right to outlaw the use of this life-saving uh, life gift from nature, and no one has the right to tell you that you cannot grow and use this plant to fulfill your medicinal needs. As human beings, it is our natural right to employ the use of medicinal plants and herbs in our quest to remain healthy. So let us now see that all laws and regulations restricting us from the use of cannabis hemp are repealed. Everything I have been telling the public for the past 11 years about the healing powers of this plant have now been proven, have now been proven to be true. The scientific studies are available and there are countless individuals who have put video clips up on YouTube attesting to the effectiveness of these oils in the treatment of practically all medical conditions, including the most dreaded of all, cancer. This plant belongs to us all and let no man try to tell you otherwise. When we again begin to grow cannabis properly and without restrictions, we can set ourselves free from the manipulation and corruption of the past. We can now create the world we have all dreamed of, if only we have the will to achieve our aims. So please join with me and let's give humanity a second chance. If we simply stand together, I have no doubt that we can make it so. Thank you so much for your time, and I hope that you that what you, I hope that you will learn a great deal here today, and then together we can make things better for everyone. Thank you very much. And power to the people.